The government's apology also hit home with the Liberal MP Steve Irons who was adopted out as a young boy. His experience as a foster child was overwhelmingly positive but his siblings weren't as lucky. I spoke with Steve Irons earlier. You are technically a forgotten Australian but when you consider a lot of the tragic stories that we've been hearing you're one of the lucky ones. Yeah mine was a very positive experience and uh, I was in an institution from the age of six months and two, until uh, about three and a half years of age and then went to uh, a family, the Irons family, who fostered me on a, on a permanent basis and uh, which qualified me as being a member of, uh, being a ward of the state in Victoria until the age of 18 and uh, I was with the Irons family for that time so I had a great positive experience, a very loving and caring family and was nurtured as a child which is what all children should expect but uh, also had siblings in the same system who, uh, uh, who did not nearly have as good an experience as I had. Do you sometimes wonder about what might have happened to you if you hadn't been put into that loving family? Uh, yeah I, I do. When you speak to people who have been through such horrific experiences I, uh, I, I sometimes do think of how lucky have I been, have I been uh, to go into a, a, a loving, caring family who already had four children, made the sacrifice of uh, fostering a child that wasn't their own, and, uh, and, and it was a great sacrifice. And I, and I look at that now and think, how would I go fostering a child? Because unfortunately, um, you only ever hear negative things about the fostering, foster care side of industry you don't hear about all the success stories so I've been out there trying to promote that my experience was positive but I do look at what other people have been through and think you know I've been extremely lucky and I thank the Irons family for um, for the care and the nurturing they gave me over that period of time but uh, yeah I was I think I was lucky yeah. You mentioned though that your siblings weren't as lucky what sort of physical and emotional challenges did they face? Yeah, I had, Ray, my older brother, he was, uh, and Jennifer were in and out of um, the, out of institutions. They'd go to a foster care family for a short period of time, and then they would uh, go back into the institution. So they were on temporary foster care. Uh, I don't know if that's the correct name for it, but uh, it was an accepted form of um, institutionalisation during that period of time. Uh, Jennifer was unlucky. She was killed in a hit and run accident at the age of 12, and um, Ray suffered tremendously. I, I don't know what personal abuse he received during that period of time but he did uh, carry the, the, an enormous weight with him not of only of his time during institutionalisation of foster care but also by the fact that he didn't grow up with his biological family and uh, uh, he turned to drink um, and um, he smoked heavily and eventually he died at the age of 52 which is far too young for someone like that but that I guess that uh, not having been through that myself but having observed him I think that was probably a result of his time in institutions as well. It took you many years to find your siblings, mm. what emotional impact does that have on you? Well I had because I was one of ten and uh, met them over a, a period of time, two of them I've, I haven't met and I haven't had contact with a long, for a long time but uh, it, it, it's a unique experience and I, but it's, I just saw it as a positive and a bit, when I look at the life they grew up in and then the, the life I had, I, I was very lucky as I said before but uh, I think it, it's dwelled on them as well and I think the, I know with my sister Margaret who, uh, who passed away in 2004, uh, her biggest, the biggest downside for her was that she said, oh, yeah I've got a lovely brother, it was very nice for her to say that, but uh, that I didn't grow up with, you know, I missed out on growing up with my siblings and, and I guess that's the same, you know, with ten kids in a house and they've three, the first three were kept, the next three were fostered, the next uh, number seven was adopted and then, then the last three were kept because the first three had grown up. So very fractured and I'm sure that's a, a prime example of a lot of people who went through those sort of situations in those days and it's uh, for my siblings who were removed and taken into institutional care or, and even my siblings who stayed with the family felt, felt deeply hurt by the fact that they didn't grow up with their other siblings. And still not knowing two of your siblings, does it feel like something's missing? Um, one, one has passed away. At, uh, the, that was the eldest, Bill. But uh, yeah, uh, the other one who's adopted, Richard, he was adopted number seven. I've never met him, so because uh, he's been in an adoptive system, and none of my other siblings have met him either. So yeah, it's uh, something. I guess it's a, it's a target that I need to uh, put on the agenda for myself personally, for the family, and uh, maybe make an effort. But he hasn't made an effort to come our way, so it's. Uh, um, he might not want 
to be in that. And again, it's a, it's a tough system to judge. I was lucky that when I did meet my siblings, they all wanted to meet with me and I was happy to meet with them. So if he's out there listening, give us a call. And what's your general feeling? You've had a lot of contact with other uh, people who have been abused in the system. What do you think this apology is going to mean to them? For them, it's a recognition of what they've been through. Um, they, you know, people finally saying, particularly the Prime Minister and, and the Federal Parliament, saying we recognise what you've been through and we, uh, and we hope to move on from there. But that's just the beginning. We need to recommend or, or, or take some of the recommendations from the revisited report and uh, make sure the, the government implement those and particularly with when it comes to getting the states to introduce redress schemes. At the present you've only had Western Australia, Queensland and Tasmania who have had redress schemes and uh, I think it's, uh, it's vital that we encourage the, the rest of the states to uh, introduce a redress scheme as well. What sort of argument would you use to try to convince them that this compensation needs to be extended? I guess you, you would look at it and say um, how would it be if that was your child? Or how would it be if you'd been through that system? Um, and not, not look at the person who's in front of you, but look at the experiences they've been through. Try and imagine and uh, let's have a redress scheme for, for them to help them move on with their lives, make them feel as though they've been recognised, they've been compensated in some way and they can get on living with themselves and with their families. That's all we have time for for this special edition of Saturday